Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. For this video, I wanted to share with you guys a new storage system that I bought for my findings and beads. But before I show you what I bought, I'm going to talk to you about the problems I've been having with my findings tarnishing. I realize that a lot of you are probably having the same problem, and if you aren't now, you might in the future. So this is my old storage container that I had for my findings and I really did love my findings in this thing because the findings that I use most of the time I put in these compartments on the outside and then stuff I didn't use that often I just put into this big section here so it really was perfect for my findings except for one thing my findings were tarnishing in this but only the findings that were on the outside the stuff that was in the bags was not tarnishing it looked brand new now I do know why the findings on the outside were tarnishing it's because I have well water and there's sulfur in my water and the sulfur is like a gasp and it corrodes stuff and it just destroys so many metals. Um, all the copper pipes in my house look really bad from the sulfur in the well water. And also, I can't wear sterling silver jewelry and wash my hands because it will tarnish it, like, right away. So, the sulfur, the gases from the sulfur has got into this and tarnished it, but I already knew that I had this issue before I put my findings in here, but I thought that this was a good container because I didn't think that the gases couldn't get into this because of how well it closes, but it did get in it. It took a couple years for my jewelry to tarnish, but it eventually did. So what did I do? Well, everything that was tarnished on the outside I took out and I had to clean it. Um, all the bags on the inside, all that stuff wasn't tarnished, so that was fine. So what I did... And I took a jewelry cleaning cloth. I don't know if you've ever seen these before. But this cloth is great for cleaning sterling silver, gold, fake jewelry. You know, a lot of cleaners ruin your jewelry. And it also cleans coins. I've done coins with it. So here you can see how dirty it is. And that's because it takes off all the tarnished uh, stuff from your jewelry. And it really does work. And it works fast. And a lot of pieces like sterling silver... It has black in it and you want to see leave that black in it because you need the detail so if you dip that into a cleaner it's going to take that away and you're going to lose the detail of your like pendant or whatever or your ring so this here polishes just what you want and it still leaves that darkness that you want so you could see the detail in your piece so this is a really awesome thing to have for cleaning fake jewelry sterling silver gold and you don't have to deal with the stink of the liquid cleaner so after I cleaned all the stuff I put it into bags and I was just going to put it in a container like this because I already had this and it was empty but everything I had wouldn't fit into this there was too much of it and it's too shallow I needed something deeper so I went online and I've been looking for a few weeks now trying to find the right things uh, the right system to store my stuff in and I found all kinds of stuff but um, what really stuck out to me was these new containers uh, that I've never seen before. They're called art bins, and they've actually been around for a while. Um, the one art bin I found was for storing metal, so for jewelry and findings. And it was called Super Satchel Slim Anti-Tarnish Inhibitor Dividers. I think that's what it's called. It's a really long name. Anyways, the dividers is what prevents your jewelry from tarnishing, and it's it's supposed to prevent it from tarnishing up to five years. So I thought that was really neat and I was reading more and more about it and I found that it doesn't come fully loaded with the removable dividers that you have to buy extra. And the box was already really expensive and to buy the dividers that was going to cost a lot more. So I decided instead of getting that one because it's uh, shallow like this box is, I wanted something that was a lot deeper. So I kept looking and I found another art bin container and I'm fixing to show you guys what that looks like. So this is the box I found and it is perfect for what I needed. It's really deep, double the deepness of the average size bead box and it is huge compared to the average size bead box and I'm going to show you the size difference. So this is the average size bead box that everybody pretty much has. I have a whole bunch of these and look at how much bigger the art bin is compared to this. So this has a lot more room and I can organize my stuff in here a lot easier and it's just perfect. 
Um, there is a couple things I would say though. If you are interested in getting something like this for your beads and you have small beads, I wouldn't recommend you pouring the beads into compartments like I have in this container here because this has a handle and when you pick it up they probably will you know merge into the other compartment because there's no thing on the top to prevent that um so if you do get something like this I would recommend storing it in bags unless if your beads are really big of course they wouldn't transfer over the top whenever I'm storing seed beads though I like to have them in their own individual containers like I put them in a bag a tube you know those little jars that twist on together I put my seed beads in that uh, so whenever you're storing seed beads you want them to be in their own little thing and then when you need it you could just take the bag or the tube or the stack of jars uh, with you to wherever you're gonna make your jewelry. So this is perfect for what I wanted because I will be keeping my findings in bags because that is what is preventing my findings from tarnishing. So I wanted to show you if you are interested in getting one of these I realized when I was putting the dividers in that the back row is a lot bigger than the front row so I don't know if you could see it or not but right there is a B and the dividers say B on them and there's four dividers that have B so all the B's go in the back and then uh, these dividers in the front there's an A in here it is right there I don't know if you can see that either and these dividers have A's on them so these ones are shorter and these ones are longer so you had to pay attention to that you got all the A's here and the B's in the back so now I'm going to show you what this container looks like with all my findings in it So here is my box with all my findings in it, and I put the findings that I have the most of in these bigger compartments. So here are all my toggle clasps. These are my lobster claw and spring ring clasps. These are the findings that you need for chandelier earrings, and these here too, which are kind of the same, but those are straight. Here's the chandelier earring findings. I have a bunch of these in different colors, and then I have my lever back your findings. I have all my split rings in here. Here are my spring rings. Here are my ball and socket clasps, which I also call snap clasps. Here are all of my crimps in different colors and sizes, and I have tubes and crimp beads in there. Here are my magnetic clasps. Here are my barrel clasps, which I actually hate because they fall off. And here are random unusual clasps that I found at thrift stores and stuff. These things here. And this really big thing. I found this at um, Bell's Outlet. On a really awesome necklace that was less than 10 bucks. I got a ton of beads off that and recycled it. These are the hook clasps. And here are the crimp things that you need for doing cord. That's gunmetal, and then I have silver ones down there. Here are my fish hook ear wires. Here are all my bead caps. Here is um, random uh, jewelry clasps and some other findings that I've gotten from old jewelry that is a darker color. It's not really silver because, you know, it's just colored from aging, so it has an antique ish look to it. Here are all my spacer bars, and I have these really neat bells in here that I've gotten from my aunt and some of these unusual connector things that I've gotten from thrift stores. And here are all of my head pins and eye pins. So everything fits in here really great and I love how organized it is and everything is in bags and it's just perfect for me. It's exactly what I wanted. There was just one other problem. This container is so huge that I can't fit it at my desk or under my desk where I usually put most of my stuff in the um, drawer carts. I have the big wide ones and I have a lot of my beads in those drawer carts but um, it wouldn't fit down there. So I needed another place to store this thing and I kept looking around and I found that Arpin sells this cube that is for putting all of your super satchels in. And this satchel the kind that it is, um, with the cube, you can fit four of these into the cube, and that's perfect because I actually needed more than one of these uh, for my super duos and some other beats that I have that I need bigger spaces for. So um, now I'm going to show you the cube that I bought to put these super satchels in. 
So this is what the cube looks like, and amazingly, the only space I had left in my room is right here between these two dressers. So the cube fits perfectly, and um, I want to make it clear to you guys that when you buy this cube, it's not going to come with any of the super satchel containers that I already showed you. This cube is going to be empty, and it's not going to come with the wheels. So um, I had to put this together too, it doesn't come already put together, you have to put it together. But um, anyways, I get why they sell it all separately. It does sound like a pain in the butt that you have to buy the cube and then you have to buy the satchel separately. But the reason why they sell it all separately is so you can customize how you want to organize all of your craft stuff. And I'm using this to store my beading supplies, but really you can use this for all kinds of arts and craft stuff. There are so many different super satchels in the series. Um, one holds spools for sewing, um, there's other containers for scrapbooking, arts and crafts like painting and drawing, all different kinds of stuff. So I'm going to show you um, the other super satchels that you can put into this thing. And like I said, the kind of super satchel I got, this thing, this cube holds four of them. So when you buy this, you're just getting the shell, the cube. You're just getting the cube, and it's not going to come with the wheels. You have to buy the wheels separately, and you have to buy the super satchels separately. So you can customize how you want your stuff to be organized. It's really awesome. So now I'm going to show you what I have in my other super satchels, and then I'm going to show you what all the super satchels look like in the cube. So I put all of my 60 seed beads in this one because I have large bags of them. So this is great for my 60s. And in this one I put all my super duos in because I also have large bags of them and I needed a big container to fit them. So this works great for me. And now I'm going to show you what all the satchels look like in the cube. So here's what it looks like with all the super satchels in it, and I still have one that's empty, and I'm thinking that I might put 8 OC beads in it, but I'm not sure yet. I saved the lid for my box so I could show you guys what the cubes look like stacked and all the different uh, super satchels in the series. So this is what mine's like. I have the bigger ones, and you can fit four in there. But if you get the slims, you can fit six into the cube, and you can stack the cube. Now I read that you don't want to stack any higher than two cubes. So you just want to do two cubes high. And also there is a weight limit on the wheels. I think it's 225 pounds, which is a lot that the wheels can hold. Um, I think it holds more without the wheels, but I have to go uh, check and read on that again. And here in this picture it shows that you could put the super satchel on your desk, the cube with the super satchels. And um, something else I wanted to point out, in this here you see that these are the slims and here are the boxes that I got. But in this one, it shows that you can mix the sizes together. So here's uh, the slims with the bigger ones, and here's another picture of them mixed together. And down here are all the super satchels in the series that you can buy. So in this first one is the wide one, like I have, but instead of it having dividers, it's just one big section, and that's it here. It shows it empty, so this is great for scrapbook paper. Here's another one. This is kind of like mine, but it has bigger compartments. And I don't know if these dividers are removable. They're probably permanent. And here's what it looks like. And these are the numbers for them, uh, so you guys can find them easier. Here's the other one I was talking about for spools, if you're into sewing. So these are little pegs that the spools of thread go onto. Here's the one I have, and here's my number for it. Here is another satchel, but instead of it being big like mine, you know, this one is deep. This one right here is the slim. Here is the uh, super satchel slim that has all the dividers. And, well, I don't know if it comes with all of them, but this is the one I was talking about that has the anti-tarnish inhibitor dividers. But um, there's actually two of them. There's one that's the anti-tarnish, and this is the regular one that doesn't have it. I don't know if this one, which is the regular one, if it comes with all the dividers. So um, that's something that you would have to check on. And this is the biggest super satchel of them all. It's, I think, double the size of this one. So when I saw online, when I was shopping for it, two of these fit into a cube. So you would have one big one here and one big one there. So um, this one here, it shows that you could put cards and stuff in it. 
So these are all the super satchels in the series and I hope you guys are finding this helpful and maybe this storage system will be for you too. And now I'm going to tell you about how much I paid for my whole uh, series. So I went and got my receipt and I have been shopping for this system for a few weeks and I was trying to get the best deal. So the cheapest place that I found, the cube, the satchels, and the wheels was on Amazon. And I've been watching on there and their prices hasn't changed any but sometimes it does uh, change when you're, you know, you throw stuff in your cart and sometimes the prices go up and down. So anyways, on Amazon I got the Art Bin Cube for $52.99. Other places I saw had it for $90. Bucks. Um, Joanne's Crafts was the second cheapest on the cube and their price was $57.99. Now, right now on Joanne's Crafts, I just went and checked, their stored stuff is all 50% off and right now you can save a lot and get the cube for $28.99. I really do think it's overpriced at $52.99, but at the time that was the cheapest place that I can find it was on Amazon. And now Joanne's Crafts is having a sale on it. So um, if you want this cube, go ahead and get it from jo Joanne's Crafts. They're only selling the cube online. You can't get it in the stores. And I don't know how long the sale is going to last for. So these bins right here, they're the same price on Joanne's Crafts right now. I bought those bins for $10.99 each and the caster wheels were $6.58. So my total bill was $103.37. But right now if you go onto Joanne's Crafts you can save a lot more than I did. So if you do want the other storage bins you will have to go check the prices on them because they are priced all differently because there's one for scrapbooking and sewing and they have all these different styles so you might want to go check and see what those are priced at if you're interested in any of the other ones. So this is the end and I hope that you found this video helpful to you in many different ways with the storage system that I shared with you guys and how to clean your jewelry with the cloth and storing your findings in bags to prevent them from tarnishing. And please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the things you've made for my videos. Thanks for watching.